We're going to revise some of the products that you learned in grade nine and extend on that knowledge by having a look at what happens when you have more than one term in an expression where you need to find the product. So if you are comfortable with your grade nine products, then continue watching this video. But if you feel that you need some revision with your grade nine products, please stop this video here and go back and re-watch the um, videos from grade nine. They have been included in the section in your homework book so um, that you can, you can go back and revise them if you feel it's necessary. If you are comfortable with your products, then we are going to carry on and have a look at what happens when we have more than one term in which we are finding a product. Okay, when we have multiple terms in an expression, we have to bear in mind that it's important that we follow the correct order of operations. So we have to remember the rule bed mass. And just a quick reminder, the brackets mean that what, if there's anything inside the bracket, you need to simplify them first. You then need to simplify any exponents. And then you can carry on to doing division and multiplication. And then lastly is addition and subtraction. Okay, so just make sure that you bear that in mind at all times. All right, if we have a look at number one, number one consists of two separate terms. That there is one term because the brackets group together as one term and the multiplication keeps it as one term. And this is another term here. And those two terms are being subtracted from each other. So if we stick with our order of operations, we first need to do any multiplication or division. And then only at the end will we deal with the subtraction between the two terms. Okay, so we do the distributive law. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times positive 3 is positive 6x. Negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times positive 9 is negative 27. We now have to collect any like terms together. The only like terms in this example are the x squareds. So 2x squared minus 3x squared is negative x squared and positive 6x and negative 27 will stay as they are. In number two, <clears throat> we have only a single term here, and so therefore it is only a product that we need to worry about. But unlike the products that you've done before, here we have a binomial, a two-termed expression, multiplied by a trinomial, a three-termed expression. And there really is no difference to, from doing any other type of product. So long as you remember that everything in the first bracket has to be multiplied by everything in the second bracket. So this x, the first term, has got to be multiplied by all three of the terms in the second bracket. And the negative 1 has got to be multiplied by all three of the terms in the second bracket. So provided you remember to do everything, you won't have a problem. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared x times positive 1 is positive x. Negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. Negative 1 times negative 2x is positive 2x. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. If we now collect any like terms together, we have x squareds which are like. We have x terms that are like. So x cubed has got no like terms to add to it. Negative 2x squared uh, sorry, yeah, negative 2x squared minus x squared is negative 3x squared and positive x plus 2x is positive 3x minus 1. Okay, so we have multiplied everything by everything else and we have added our like terms together. So that is our final answer. All right, in your homework book, there are two examples for you to try. So please pause the video and try those. All right, in number one, if we look carefully, we can see there are two terms. 3a times a minus 4 is a single term, and that binomial there is a single term as well. So we first need to do the multiplication within those terms. 3a times a is 3a squared. 3a times negative 4 is negative 12a. For the second part, we have two things happening, if you like. There is actually a positive 1 in front of this bracket, and there are two brackets that are being multiplied by them by each other. So because there are two steps, I'm going to keep the result of timesing those two brackets out in a bracket. For this sum, it's not really all that critical because this is a positive one that we have in front. But it's a good habit to get into just in case that number in front of the binomial times the binomial is something other than positive one. So a times a is a squared. Our outers 
are positive 2a, our inners are negative 3a. Positive 2a subtract 3a is negative 1a, and negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. <clears throat> As I said earlier, that this bracket wasn't 100% necessary because when we distribute a positive 1 into the bracket, the bracket stays the same. But it's a good habit to get into in case it's not positive 1 that we're distributing. Okay, we can now add our like terms together. So we've got a squared and we've got a's. 3a squared plus a squared is 4a squared. Negative 12a subtract a is negative 13a. And then our minus 6. All right, in number 2, also have two terms here. x minus 1 times x plus 1 is a sum and difference product. So revision of sum and difference products, we just multiply <coughs> excuse me, multiply the first and the last. Here we need to do the distributive law. So negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared. And negative 4x times positive 3 is negative 12x x squared minus 4x squared is negative 3x squared minus the 12x minus the 1. If you wrote it as minus 1 minus 12x, that's also correct. I just like to write my powers in descending powers of x.